young girls dropping out of sports during their teenage years was already a problem in this country well before the word coronavirus entered our everyday lexicon. Budget cuts and layoffs have been the reality during this pandemic, leaving some girls without a safe space to play. Their sport dropout rate has only increased, and it's timely that we discuss that problem now. Keeping girls in sport during the pandemic, here are our panelists. I think Jess is the founder of She's for Sports. It's a platform which celebrates the accomplishments of women in sports, particularly diverse women. Stephanie Dixon is chef de mission for Team Canada at the 2021 Paralympic Games. And in Calgary, Chandra Crawford. She is the founder and CEO of Fast and Female, which empowers young women through sport. Are young women more at risk vis-a-vis -vis sport during the pandemic? Yeah, it's challenging times for everybody. I think even before the pandemic, we saw a lot of resources being cut for girls or women in uh, varsity sports. Um, when right now, we really have to look at who doesn't have access to sports. We know that there are a lot of health um, implications for young girls in sport right now. And there's a lot of people who are, are at home and sedentary or don't have access to the gym. So how are we giving access to people who have barriers in sport? It was a problem before the pandemic. It is now, but I'm encouraged because I see a lot of grassroots uh, initiatives and, and platforms and even women I featured on my panel who are starting their own initiatives to get girls in sport just because the model and the, uh, the access isn't there for them right now. Uh, Stephanie, one of the things that Anka was referring to is the fact that budget cuts for certain organizations have forced girls only programs to be eliminated and we're moving towards co-ed programs, boys and girls in the same space. Can that be intimidating for young women at times? It's absolutely intimidating. I think that, you know, we saw a lot of different girls only sport programs coming to life and it increased the, the number of young girls participating in sport and it's a big risk to lose those programs and, and you know, from my own lived experience, you know, you, you take some more intersectionality and you add on a disability on top of that. So say a female with a disability, you know, trying to feel comfortable in her own body, um, looking for role models of, of strong, powerful, disabled women, it, it can be a huge challenge. And you add the isolation of a pandemic on top of that. And I think we need to give a lot of attention to young girls to make sure they stay in sport. Chandra, you've had so much experience with this through Fast and Female, uh, but the reality exists that young women drop out of sport at an alarming rate once they reach puberty. Why is that and why is it exacerbated by the pandemic? Our girls are quitting sports in droves when they're reaching that adolescence phase because we're failing them at making sport work for them. It's the model for males, grafted onto, well, why don't the girls like it? Why are the, oh, the girls just aren't into it. So uh, really looking to us, the adults, the quality sport providers for what are we doing to learn about what girls want, need, and we're different and our experiences are different. And uh, that's our big call to action of Fast and Emails to be engaging the girls, asking them, who wouldn't believe the things that they are coming up with because you're not a 13 year old girl. So just <laughs> ask them. And, and that makes a big difference in what they actually want in a quality sport experience, social belonging. They wanna be able to achieve and they wanna be coached and they wanna be part of something. One of the things that uh, has been a truism of sport over the years is in order to be it, you have to see it. And are we still lacking role models and leaders for young women in sport, people that look like them? I think the leaders and the role models are there. And when I started She's Just Sports in 2016, that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to normalize the narrative that there are women in sport who work in the front office. There are women who work on the fields. There are women who work in uh, data analytics. We've also featured indigenous um, women in sport who work across the sport field. We have to normalize the narrative that one type of person doesn't work in sport. Um, sport should reflect all of us that are a part of the, the sport ecosystem. Stephanie, you're a leader in sport. Do you find that to be something that A, you're proud of, B, that you feel a certain responsibility to inspire other young women? 
Scott, I could not be more proud to be the chef de mission for Team Canada heading into Tokyo 2020. And, and you know, it, it's a, it feels like a, a giant responsibility, especially right now during the pandemic to offer, you know, all athletes of all abilities, you know, hope and, and safety and, and an environment to be able to be inspired to move. And, and so we're just encouraging our sports system to adapt as much as possible. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's been said, you know, role models are out there and, and we need to normalize that, you know, role models look in all different ways, shapes and forms. And so for me as a disabled woman, I used to wear a prosthetic leg and a big decision on not wearing that prosthetic leg anymore. Now I'm on crutches was because I don't want to hide who I am or my body. I want to be proud to be a disabled female sport leader. And I want young all, all girls, it doesn't matter if you have a disability or not, all young girls to look up and see someone who's confident in who they are, who might look a little bit different than the narrative of what a sport leader looks like and think someday that could be me too. We celebrate women who succeed in sports that are traditionally played by men. Do we need to do a better job in your opinion of celebrating women who succeed in women's sport? Do we need to showcase women's high performance sport more in order to provide an example for, for girls? I don't see why we wouldn't. It's darn good sports and exciting and the, the level is incredible. I believe that the bigger picture of this is something we care about, especially as Canadians, uh, an amazing country working really hard to provide equity deserving groups with the opportunities that we all cherish and value as Canadians. And by elevating all the different athletes and uh, those Canadian values, that's beneficial for everyone. I think I'm gonna give you the last word on this section of our <laughs> panel. And, and, you know, what is the most important thing about sport uh, for a young woman in her life? What, what does it provide for a young woman that we need to get to more young women? I mean, I played volleyball throughout high school. I did track and field as well. Um, and it provided just a sense of uh, being a part of a team, learning how to solve an issue. You want to win. You want to be competitive. It, it teaches you so many different types of life skills. And there's research and, and reports out there that correlate uh, women who are in the C-suite with um, their, uh, their engagement in sport throughout school and throughout their adult life. There's so many uh, great benefits to being in sport. And I think that, you know, girls should have access to sport. We should remove the barriers as much as we can to get uh, different girls in sport. And how could we just try to transform the sport model to get them involved, to make them feel included and to give them an opportunity to, to really enjoy sport the way that I did. One of the themes here is that uh, women need role models in sports. So why don't we head to Vancouver and consider the Washington Kids Foundation and the Her Time Girls Program. Sandy and I are police officers with Vancouver Police. Three years ago, police officers Anisha Parhar and Sandy Avalar felt more could be done to help girls in Vancouver's high-risk communities. What's your favorite animal? We realized there was a void when it came to dealing with young women and their vulnerability with organized crime and the gang lifestyle. You guys have all done one of the vision boards here, right? With the Washington Kids Foundation and her time, it gives kids a place where they can meet, regroup, talk about their feelings, talk about what's going on in their lives. Two, one. We're doing it. <laughs> Obviously a big component is physical literacy. Getting those endorphins going, it's getting these girls into a positive mindset and realizing that, you know, you can be active, it's not intimidating. Woo! When the pandemic hit this spring, it left these girls even more vulnerable. It's hard enough being a kid now, and it's even harder being a kid during COVID. Their lives have been completely turned upside down, and they feel alone and a little lost. Very, very cool, love it. The Jumpstart Sport Relief Fund provided vital funding, which helped to keep the program running. That funding's allowed us to open the doors to everyone that's looking to have a place to come together and that sense of belonging. I know, we rarely see the sun out, huh? Coming here is like the funnest thing I do. It's like the thing I look forward to every week. That's exciting. How did you guys meet? Are you guys friends before? 
thank you guys for being like my best friends and the people I can count on no matter what. Vancouver police officers Anisha Parhar and Sandy Avalar of the Her Time Girls Program. One of the things that seems to be key to the program is physical contact, the ability to congregate with other young women. So in the course of the pandemic, how do you, how do you make that work? The girls are very close and it's very easy to come in and want to hug one another. Um, we obviously do things with the proper social distancing, but just having everyone in that same kind of space at least and doing, you know, positive activities, physical activities like that, it still kind of gives them that sense that, hey, we're kind of together still. Yeah, maybe we're not hugging like we usually do when we greet each other, but we're all kind of doing the same activity. So it kind of gives that feeling of unison, I think. Like Hannah, one of your, uh, one of the people that goes to the program said, you know, I want to thank you so much because you're my, you're my best friends and, and I need you to be there for me. Um, boy, that's got to be very important to have that kind of contact with other young women. Yeah, you know, when it started, oh man, in March, I guess, when this all started and everything was shut down, the girls had check-ins still, but it was, it was online, it was on Zoom, it was on the phone, it just wasn't the same. And I mean, it was necessary at the time, but as time progressed, we switched to the new standards that were put in and you really see how much they needed it and how badly they needed that contact. Do you believe that there's light at the end of the tunnel? Are you making a difference? And can you during the course of this? Oh, absolutely. Like, um, like all of us, we've had to adapt and we've had to adjust. But like you saw in, in that uh, video that we did, these girls, for some of them, this one to two times a week that they come to the center and that they're around the coaches just lights up their world. And you know what? That is enough, I know, for Sandy and I to kind of keep going. We've been, you know, doing this for three years now, but especially this year, it being this tough, it's just those smiles are worth all of it. Anisha and Sandy, uh, thanks so much for doing this and uh, stay safe. Stephanie, the uh, Washington Kids Foundation and the Her Time Girls Program, during the pandemic, it, it might be essential because one of the pillars of it is that it's providing a safe place for girls in sport and to consider sport. How important is that to have safety for young women in sport? Safety is where it all begins. If young girls don't feel safe, they're not going to engage, they're not gonna participate. And so, you know, it really takes uh, a female leader to reach out to young girls. And you can just see the impact that it made with the young girls in this program to have these two women to reach out to them and to create a space where there's no judgment for them to be exactly who they are in exactly their own body. And I think, you know, with this pandemic, we're looking at everything differently just because of the nature of this pandemic and what a great opportunity to redefine and to rethink the way that young girls want to engage or participate in sport. One of the problems, Chandra, with the pandemic is, is a sense of isolation. And uh, in spite of all the efforts to do things virtually, there, there is this feeling that, that young women, as young men, can become isolated. And therefore, how important is it for them to have other young women to discuss things with, to to be active with. This this seems to me to be a, a problem of the pandemic. Yeah, definitely a problem of the pandemic to not be getting together. And then even some sports, when you are getting together, your mask on two meters apart. And as a young teenage girl, I can't imagine the, the feelings um, and being inside your own head, it would be really negative and difficult. So if you're in any kind of sport community, still being that community that you can be to the fullest extent right now and thinking about being there for each other because yeah, it's incredibly tough. The two police officers, Ayanka, in, in, in Vancouver uh, are, are dealing with at-risk youth, uh, uh, girls who are marginalized. Um, do, do you find that, that that is an increasing situation vis-a-vis -vis girls in sport, that there are marginalized groups? 
I think there's always been marginalized groups. There aren't always a lot of spaces for all of us to be our best selves. And when I think about that program for the girls, I mean, I remember in the the, uh, the clip, one of the girls was saying to one of the police officers that she loves coming there because these women are her best friends. So they're finding community. That's just amazing that they can have community, um, you know, work out and exercise and understand uh, nutrition and understand uh, having a, a healthy relationship with their bodies and working out and, and what great role models those two police uh, women were or are. Stephanie, uh, this this idea of a healthy relationship with their bodies and the concept of physical literacy, which has become a kind of a catchphrase that we throw a, around a lot, uh, but it seems to me that it it's essential going forward to a balanced life and and particularly for young women who have to get in tune with their bodies. Would you agree with that? Mm, I do agree, Scott. And I think that in the past we've thought like, you know, how can young athletes fit into this idea of sport or an athlete that we've imagined that it's just, it happens this one way and it looks this, this one, this one way. And, and now I think, especially with physical literacy is that everybody is unique and everybody's going to have a different way of empowering itself to participate in this sport. So it's more like how, how does this sport work with this body instead of forcing your body to work in the way we imagine this sport to look like? Because at the end of the day, all bodies are powerful and beautiful. And instead of, especially for young girls, the pressure for us to look a certain way or to fit into this certain mold of what an athlete looks like, we're switching the narrative, especially with physical literacy. It's like, get to know your body, go inward to find out about your body instead of outward. And, and, for me, the powerful part of this pandemic is we are creating healthy online content because for so long on the television or on the internet, we just saw these images of unrealistic beauty and these unrealistic expectations that so few of us fit into. Whereas now, so many different organizations are creating online content. I'm just so heartwarmed to think that young girls will now see much more realistic expectations, role models of what athletes look like and for them to be encouraged to get to know their own body. And it's beautiful and powerful in its own way. Are there enough opportunities for young women in sport in Canada, around the world for that matter, and, and how do we create more opportunities for young women to stay in sport? There are nowhere near enough opportunities, especially thinking about the intersecting social identities of a girl, race, mm -hmm. religion, ethnicity, class, sexual orientation, abilities, and how we can bring sport, make sport into something new and better. And there's a silver lining from 2020 that as awful as it, as it is the awareness that has been raised in this year about the needs that are not being met is something we will not forget heading into next year whenever there is a vaccine and we're all playing sports again. We must be conscious of considering all the different backgrounds and barriers to all the different kinds of girls. And I feel really, really like that's going to be something very powerful going forward. I think it goes back to empathy and care. If we look at the sport model, as I said, and we're seeing that certain groups have been left out, we're seeing certain groups don't have access to resources, we have to start with care. Like we care about this issue and let's try to change it. Half of, of the population watches sport and half of the population is, are women. So we contribute to sport, we wanna be engaged in sport, but we also want the equity. And I think it starts with, uh, you know, all of these different sports leagues, um, anybody senior up, executives in sport have to start caring. And I think it's been said, we go forward with kindness, with care, with the, the idea that we're not just trying to go back to what was, but we're trying to build back better. And I think build back better is my favorite catchphrase right now. Let's do this better so everyone, absolutely everyone, you know, Chanda had named all of the different communities of people that sometimes fall between the cracks, let's build back better and make sure everybody is included and feels like there is a safe space for them in sport. Keeping girls on the fields of play, nowhere to go but up. Thanks so much to our panelists, Stephanie Dixon, Ianka Jess, and Chandra Crawford. Be safe.